A South African doctor has pioneered a new surgery technique to combat headaches. It promises permanent pain relief and an improved quality of life, but only some people qualify. The South African and Italian governments have now agreed to fund further research on migraine surgery, and that's by Dr. Elliot Chevelle and his Italian collaborator. Well, to tell us more, Dr. Chevelle joins us in the studio now. He's the medical director at the Headache Clinic and chairman of the ESA branch of the International Headache Society. Good morning and welcome to you, Doctor. Good morning. Tell me about this new surgery. It sounds like it can really give a lot of people a new lease on life, actually. Yeah, well, probably half of the headache sufferers that uh, come into the headache clinic have got an uh, arterial component to their pain. In other words, the pain comes from the little blood vessels in this, just under the skin of the scalp. Apparently the current thinking is that, uh, you know, it's all in the brain, in the actual head. You're, you're saying it could be anywhere. Actually, on your, on your jaw, you could have a vessel that leads up to your brain. Is that correct? No. The, you're correct. The current thinking is that it's uh, the pain of migraine comes from the blood vessels inside the brain. Interestingly, though, there's never, ever been proof of that. It's just an idea that has taken root and, and been repeated and repeated. But when one examines... Uh, somebody with a headache or a migraine uh, and they've got an art, uh, a vascular component it's on the surface and you can tell mm. and it's very easy if uh, somebody has a headache and you happen to compress with your fingertip the correct artery the headache goes away immediately when you take your finger off it comes back so explain the surgery apparently it's quite a minor procedure we do it in a day clinic. It's very, very safe. And it, it consists of locating which of the little arteries under the skin are causing the pain. And then each one, one makes an incision and just cauterizes it. And has it been successful every time? How many people has this been sort of tried and tested on? Well, I've done about 400 cases. Okay, so quite a lot. And, yes. and a lot and of success. Yes, it's been successful, absolutely. Who's benefiting at the moment? Uh, there may be somebody out there saying, well, I suffer from headaches. Um, I, I may need this, this surgery. Can you mm. go and, and get it? Can they come to you? And does the medical aid pay? Well, yes, of course they can come to me. Uh, you know, this is what I do. Mm. Um, and since the news broke, a lot of people have been coming in and asking for it. The interesting thing is that even though you might have vascular pain, there are very many people who we can get, who we can cure without the surgery. So one has to do a full assessment to see who really needs it and who doesn't. Nobody wants to do surgery, even minor surgery, if it's mm. not absolutely necessary. Mm. As we go to the medical aids, some do, some don't. Uh, each one has got its own policies. What are you just talking generally now? Uh, how do you know the difference between a uh, sort of average headache and, and a migraine? When, when do you know? that you should seek help? You should seek help if it's affecting your quality of life. If you have to take painkillers a couple of times a week, uh, any, anything where it's actually affecting the, your uh, emotional relationships, your work, your whatever, if it's affecting you, um, Sorry, the other part of the question was? No, I was just saying, uh, you know, how do you know the difference between a headache and, and a migraine? I, I guess just uh, intensity. It's absolutely correct. It's intensity. As the headache gets more severe, you get more symptoms that are commonly associated with migraine, like nausea and vomiting and light sensitivity, etc. Mm. You were saying, talking about the surgery, you know, that's not always necessary. You can look at the underlying causes of, of headaches, mm. I'm sure. What, you know, if people want to assess the, the cause of their own headaches, do you have any uh, suggestions? It's hard to do it yourself. You have to have somebody who knows what they're doing to assess you. Mm. But uh, the, the, two most, the two most common causes of headaches are muscle tension around the head and neck and arterial pain in these little arteries. So one has to differentiate which one is actually causing. And most people have a combination of both. But one person might have a lot of muscle tension pain and very little arterial pain. Somebody else along the scale might have a lot of arterial pain and very little muscle pain. So it, it needs an expert assessment. How would you, what advice would you give to someone w w when their headaches are, are muscle related? Um, can they sort of maintain an exercise regime? How would you go about that? You know, in some people uh, exercise might help or doing yoga or relaxation techniques etc. But uh, 
actually the best way is to be treated for the muscle tension and we can treat people uh, and usually it's by means of a, a, a little appliance that we put in a pallet which relaxes all the muscles of their head and neck. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so we can do it without medication. That's the biggest message really that you don't need medication and it's bad for you. Mm. What about food triggers? Apparently there's some foods that, that people respond to. Yes, uh, some people have food triggers, but one has to be aware of the difference between the underlying problem and the trigger. A trigger is just something that is affecting the problem that you've already got and making it worse. Mm. Interestingly about food triggers, chocolate is one of the big ones. But they've done some interesting tests on people. We, by means of a, of, a, of a gastric tube, they put chocolate into the person's stomach and the other half of the people they put no chocolate in and they found no difference in the migraine. And the thought is that the reason that people think it's chocolate is because when you're about to get a migraine, you very often get a hunger for something sweet. So you eat chocolate and then you get the migraine and you associate the two. But it's the migraine that's caused the chocolate, not the chocolate that's caused oh, the migraine. Very interesting. Mm. And, and you've done a lot of interesting research um, also between the link uh, between headaches and sleeping problems in, children's, um, in, in children. And of course we'll keep following and, and see what happens with this new surgery. Thank you for your time this morning. Thanks so Dr. much. We were chatting there to Dr. Elliot Chevelle from the Headache Clinic. We take a short ad break. Stay tuned. We'll see you on the other side of this.